Welcome back to part three and how to make male foam cosplay body armor right here on the Evil Ted channel. All right, there it is. Now it's all technically sealed, ready to be painted, but I want to do some of my work before I start painting on this. All the seams where I glued everything together, it's all sealed up in the front, but unfortunately, it's not in the back. So on your costume, when you're making all your contact points and your joints, you want to protect these as well too, especially against heat and body sweat. Body sweat is like battery acid to barge. If you don't seal these things off over a period of time, it will kind of get in there and sweat. Because when I do stuff for like films and movies, people in costumes are like 15 hours a day and the body sweat will come in here and just make this all loose and come apart. So what we're gonna do is we wanna seal it up. And what I've done is I've taken my barge cement and I went in here and brushed on my seams about an inch of barge all through my seams. Okay, did that. Then I went out and got a black t-shirt and I cut them into strips, about one inch strips. And I took uh, my good old uh, spray adhesive, Super 77, and sprayed this on the fabric because this is gonna make this really tacky because I'm gonna lay this over the barge cement on top of my seams. Like I said, now I have the spray 77 on this. I'm gonna go right on my seams because what we're gonna do is that I wanna put a dam on this, not just the fabric itself, but I'm gonna go back over this with either latex or munch posh. But I'll do is go like this and just put this fabric. This is gonna, because even if you, um, you could just brush some, some latex and stuff on it, but I always like to make an extra precaution to make sure this never gets in there ever again, so. And the reason I do the um, 77 on top of the fabric, it's just easier. I mean, granted, I could put barge and just brush barge on the fabric, and you can do that, but it's just, uh, takes a little bit longer, probably more durable, but uh, this will still, look, um, still work, because the 77 is just to help me stick it down because what's really gonna reinforce this is when I brush on the back of the fabric. As you can see, I got all my fabric covering my seams, and now I wanna seal this off and make sure and protect this from moisture. Now, sometimes I use latex, but the more I think about it, I'm gonna particularly on this brand, I'm gonna use Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, I'd also, you also, guys can also use uh, just wood glue. But the whole thing is you just wanna seal this fabric and make a protective dam to protect the glue from moisture. And uh, the cool thing about the Mod Podge too, is it'll soak into that fabric and make it really strong. But all you're really doing is making a nice protective dam. And like anything, and sometimes people would ask me, hey Ted, you know, how long do your suits last? And I've had costumes last for years. It's like anything, the mo you know, if you really take time to protect it and really reinforce the back of it, it'll hang in there. So, because I always found the thing that destroys suits the most is just sweat and longevity. It's not so much the abuse as that just the heat and body sweat. All right, now all the seams are sealed. Got my fabric, got my Mod Podge all dry. Now my seams are protected from heat and moisture and the suit will take a beating. <laughs> and also you can notice, uh, before I did it, I had to cut my tab off originally because it was on a seam line I wanted to patch up. So I had to glue myself in a new tab so I can hang it, so I can paint it. Uh, on my choice of paint, I'm gonna go, I want a deep metallic. So I end up using uh, Automotive, I bought this. It's a Dupla car color, perfect match. And this color is a, a graphite mica. This is really good, it's gonna give it a nice metallic sheen. I'm not gonna go heavy with this, I'm gonna go very light. As a matter of fact, I won't talk about it, I'll just show you. So let's paint it. All done, I got my metallic finish, all of it. Dark metallic, which I like, you can kind of see the reflection to it now, but it still stays dark. Keep that kind of SWAT military look to it. Now that's my base coat. Now I have it all done. My next step is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna paint these rivets. And there's a technique I like to do when I'm doing this. So let's do that next. Okay, for the rivets on my costume, the detail, I found the exact diameter that I wanted to use. 
I traced it onto some blue tape. And also, yeah, this is what I like to use. I use a 3M blue tape. You can get it an inch and two inch. So sometimes I like to buy an inch. You can just make templates out of some. So I did. Take my blue tape, laid it out, traced the circle I wanted, like so. As you can see. I went in with an X-Acto blade to cut this bad boy out, which I have right here. So now that I have this, I can take this, like so. See my rivet detail? I can take the tape very gently and just lay it on over, like so. And then when I go to airbrush my paint, I can just very gingerly uh, airbrush it on without uh, going over. So I'm going to take this technique and do this to all my rivets with an airbrush. It's there, but nice and subtle. I like that. So next one. You know, now I got them painted. Uh, I like them, but they they seem a little bright to me. Now I get back and look at them. I was look at the chest piece and. and I like the silver, but I would like them to be a little darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with the airbrush and a little bit of black. I'm just going to darken the centers a little bit. So just get a little bit like so. See, just kind of knock it. Just do just do a dark center. You know, see that helps. So it's therefore it's not silver powering. All right, on the armor, what I have right now is that I had some graphics. I had some vinyl, so I put on my. Uh, of course, it's going to be a high-tech police department PD armor outfit. The vinyl was, of course, extremely white. So I started aging it, and I realized, hey, Ted, this is a video tutorial. You might want to show people how you're doing this. <laughs> so as you can see, this is, and also these vinyls you can buy at any graphic store. And I had some lying around. So I had a PD. I started dirtying up, and I, had, I, use, uh, I got brown acrylic. I got my black acrylic. And also, what are, you also could get some raw sienna, other good colors. I screw them to a piece of cardboard. I have my wet brush I apply it with. I have a dry brush to kind of bat over to kind of even out a little bit. So, as you can see, and I like this. The more I think about it, maybe I should have dirtied them up on, this, on the pad before I stuck them on here because you, when you're dirtying this thing up, you don't want to get too... Uh, so let me just do a little black and brown. I think I want to go a little black here on this one. Here's do it. So I just kind of blot it like so. Spots. Add a little bit more water. And I try to keep it thick because what you do is you're going to do this and you can hit it and get your dry brush and you're going to thin it out like this, see? And that just kind of evens everything out a little bit, see? Now, and you may think it's too dirty, but the white is so white that I really want to knock this down. See, it already looks better. See, now it looks a little bit, so now it looks a little bit, it's there. But not as brand spanking new. It helped knock it down a little bit. But also when I was going through some stickers, I had a cool vinyl sticker left over from a job. It had some cool barcodes and stuff on it. Once again, I thought it would look really badass, like a serial number on the back. But once again, brand spanking new. So let's do the same thing. All right, here are all my parts. I got everything all painted exactly the way I wanted to. Got my dark gunmetal. I took my airbrush and went in. I kind of darken up the edges, the little pre-weathering on it. Got my graphics, got the vinyl, dirty down, and it's good. And unfortunately, I want to apologize because this paint job's not really that elaborate. But if you want to see more intensive like detail about painting, check out this video right here, How to Make Female Cosplay Armor. And I go really extensively into detail. Definitely check out that video. Now, once I got everything painted, everything to my liking, got my graphics and stuff, the next thing I want to do is seal it. And I'm going to seal it with my all-time favorite is uh, Future Flow Wax. I love using this stuff. It's, it, you put it on really thin. It's got a semi-shine to it. It's not too glossy. It's kind of, kind of like a semi-gloss, and it's flexible. But if you want, you can also use you know, Crystal Clear. You just got to put it on really thin. And if you want to know more things about what things uh, supplies and things you can coat your phone with, you can check out this video I have right here called Tools of the Trade. I go look extensively about paints and uh, other techniques you guys can use to coat and seal things. All right, now we got that out of the way. I'm going to fire up my spray booth. Have my trusty airbrush right here. I'm going to get some future floor wax. I'm going to go ahead and coat everything with the floor wax before we start assembling. 
Um, everything is all sealed and ready to go. And so what I'm going to start doing now is assembling. On this particular shoulder piece, this guy's going to sit like that. And, um, and I have all my other pieces going to hang off of this. But I'm going to hook this shoulder to this. And how I'm going to go about doing that is with a nylon strap. And I have a one inch right here. And you can buy this at fabric stores or uh, military surplus stores. You can find this anywhere else, uh, good fabric stores. Just one inch webbing, good stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach it to this and I'm gonna explain to you guys the techniques I like to use when gluing strapping to my foam. Here's the webbing. I have a four piece. I'm gonna do two straps in the front and two in the back. So of course four for one shoulder piece. And when cutting too, the webbing, you'll find a little bit sometimes it frays. And the best way to deal with that is to take a lighter and just heat seal it. Now I'll keep it from fraying. It's good. As a matter of fact, when you go ahead and cut that, go ahead and do that. It just saves it and makes everything a lot cleaner and easier to work with to seal up your strapping. All right, we got that done. Now these guys are heated. Now I have my, uh, my shoulder piece. What I've done is I kind of figured out the dimensions and the length of what I need for my straps. And I laid them all up on my suit. And I took a Sharpie mark and did registrations of where my straps are going to go. And the reason I did that because before you start gluing this on, you've got to break this seal. This is a backside of foam. It's been kind of heat sealed and it's uh, non-porous. So to get the glue to really stick, you got to break this because you want to get uh, the porous foam and the porous fabric with glue and have them contact there. Because I've had in the future, if you don't do this and you glue it, it has a tendency just to pop right off because it's sealed off. So what you want to do is take your Dremel and the sanding drum and just Dremel right into where you put your marks and expose that raw foam. Okay, there you go. Now I have it, it's all done. Got my uh, exposed there and it's more porous. Now you just take your bar cement and you want to go in. Now if you're doing, on this particular one I'm doing um, with webbing, but if you're doing Velcro and you have pieces you want to stick on with Velcro, I would recommend the same thing. Just to get that Velcro to stick better, you definitely want to break that foam surface. Now I'm going to put the, the barge on the straps. And this is, once again, this is fabric. So your first coat's going to soak in. Also, I recommend when you do this, get a piece of cardboard or thick butcher paper because you just don't want to put glue on your table. But I like doing that just so I can really kind of saturate. Also, you see some blue tape. I put the blue tape there because I don't want the glue to go beyond my armor. Because when you do that, sometimes you can see it. And it kind of looks like, like what it is, glue and kind of tacky. So I don't want to show that underneath my, I only want to show the, I just want the glue to be on the parts where I know it's going to stick. So, once again, being that this uh, webbing has got fabric on it, you definitely want to do two coats. Sometimes I probably can go as far as three coats because um, it soaks it up. And the first coat soaks up and then the second coat kind of built on the top and probably a third one. So you might go as much as three coats on the fabric. Okay, and it'll dry. I have my two coats on my foam. I have my webbing straps. I have three coats on this. Now to stick it down, as you can see, my, I have my blue tape line was my safety, but also you can kind of see where it starts. So I can line it up like so. Let me strap where it needs to begin, just like that. There you go, take my tape off. Okay, now I got this in place. What I'm going to do is I seal this with a Mod Podge. There we go. Now granted, you can put the whole suit together and go back in behind it, and put your uh, sealant and Mod Podge in. But uh, I like to just do everything while it's still in pieces just to make everything a lot easier. So Now you can see where I plotted my, um, my, my drop-offs, my 45, so these pieces could overlap like I planned in my original design. So now they drop in really nice and evenly. And of course, you're looking <laughs> in the back, all this crazy chaos. You can see I did the webbing and I uh, did the one-inch strips. I got one in the center for this part right here. Actually, I did three for the top. I had one in the center and the two on the side. And I did these two, there's two of so the lowest and once again, because um, therefore they're all moving. So this makes a little bit more of a nice piece of armor so I can kind of move and flex with the body. Okay, I got it all, got the shoulders all dialed in and I went through. As you can see, got my strapping, got the shoulders and I went through and uh, got all glued in, mop, did my mod, mod, <laughs> mod podge, can't speak today, mod podge um, sealant on that. It's all together, so I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take this and put this on the, uh, the body form and take a look at it, see how everything falls. 
now it's on the body form, you get a better idea how everything's going to fall. This looks good. I got the spacing worked really well because now that it's hanging, they, they, they just touched just enough, but not too much. Um, this all falls nicely. There's the back. I think lines up good. It's all lined up. It's nice. Also, um, now I'm looking at, this is where my, I'm going to put my straps. I'm going to do the one inch straps on this and I could probably get away with the one, but aesthetically I think it'd be cool with two. So I'm going to do a most well, overall total four straps. I'll have two here and two on the other side. And <clears throat> under here, this is kind of exposed, the raw foam, but I'm going to, I want to make a little like foam leather pad in here, like part of the, uh, like padding. Although aesthetically it'll be there for looks, not for practicality, mostly for looks. It'd be nice to have a little foam pad thing in there. There we go. But this all together came together really well. I'm really happy with it. And also, <clears throat> this detail work you can see right here is I did out of foam. And it's all nice bevel cuts. But uh, I go into this on detail on this particular video right here. If you check out this video, I talk about how to do uh, nice beveled cuts and parts to stick on foam pieces. This, this is all foam as well. So you can check that out. But now we got this. Let me go ahead and uh, take this guy off. Let's do some straps and let's do some foam padding for underneath these shoulders. All right, here are all the, uh, the webbing and the buckles I have for the side of the armored suit. And this, uh, this, these are just one inch uh, plastic buckles. You guys, once again, you can get at uh, surplus stores or fabric stores. I have one inch, I have one inch webbing. And what I like to do is I sew these bad boys. So when you're getting this up, I went ahead and did my measurements and got my length and everything I wanted. And now I'm just going through and sewing this. I was doing this, I realized, I might want to tell you guys out there what I'm doing. <laughs> so what I do, I know you have people out there that can sew. Fantastic, good for you, because you know something? That's a skill that you guys have, it's good. I do not. I don't have a sewing machine, nor do I not to sew, nor do I really like sewing. So I usually just hire people to sew for me, or you just buy pre-existing stuff. But when it comes to straps, it's just stitching. So what I like to do on the uh, fabric store, I get the really heavy coarse black thread heavy duty uh, cord, uh, I'm sorry, heavy duty string and uh, use that. I always get black because I'm always going to be black webbing and I get a, my favorite's a uh, hoop needle. I like these guys, they're just easier to go. And so what I've done is I've tied a knot, and just kind of take a hoop needle and do this. And once again, I know there's people in my youth, I used to be lazy and I would just glue everything <laughs> and I would just take barge cement and glue the straps and webbing, but anything it's not, it's going to hold, but it won't hold forever and it won't hold that well. You can't beat sewing and stitching. So I definitely highly recommend it. When you guys do all this stuff, you want to go through and just sew all your straps. Any, anything going to a buckle, any snaps going to a piece of leather or fabric, don't glue it, sew it. Ta -da. There it is, all done. Body armor is completed. I uh, have the, uh, the straps I fixed glued in and buckled so I can snap in snap out of my costume and I have my little extra leather padded trim piece which kind of pulls this together I really like how they came out so I'm very happy well I'll tell you what guys this pretty much uh, wraps up and concludes how to make male foam cosplay body armor it really came out nice I'm really happy with it also if you guys first time watch me uh, don't forget to subscribe to the link below and when you do that also I have other videos of more costume and foam cosplay you guys can check out and also for you people out there who are asking me for supplies and where I get some things, I have a Amazon link below. And please, if you do the shop, shop that link below. And with no extra cost to you, a little percentage of that goes to me to help support the Evil Ted channel, which would be great. And for you people out there, you can follow me on Twitter at EvilTed40. You also can find me and contact me on uh, Facebook at Evil Ted Smith. So guys, that pretty much wraps up uh, how to make male phone cosplay body armor. Catch you guys next time right here on the Evil Ted channel.